And we are back at Carlson Munger Stadium for tonight's matchup between the undefeated Rockford Rams and the visiting Jenison Wildcats. Tonight's going to be an energy field game with homecoming as well as senior night. Like you said, senior night homecoming makes for a great atmosphere out here. A lot of people getting recognized tonight. It's going to be a good one. I'm Ryan Karowski. I'm Hayden Oaks. And I'm Liam Peterson. Under the Lights starts now. Out comes the Rockford Rams on the field, ready to play the Wildcats of Jenison. We will now send you down to the front of the student section for our conference predictions. Here we are in front of the mob, the Rockford High School student section with today's OK Red conference matches. The first matchup, we got Caledonia and West Ottawa. Caledonia led by quarterback Mason McKenzie. I've got Caledonia. I've got Caledonia. I got Caledonia. The next matchup, we got Granville and Grand Haven. I've got Granville by a landslide. Granville by quite a bit. Granville and it won't be close. And now we've got the best matchup in the OK Red this week. We've got East Kentwood and Hudsonville. East Kentwood needs two more wins to make the playoffs. I've got East Kentwood, they're at home. I have Hudsonville. I like the upset, Hudsonville. The upset with Hudsonville. In the matchup that we're all here for, Rockford versus Jenison. I've got Rockford. I think Mac Vandenhout's going to have a great game. Uh, he, he's going to have a lot of connections with Alex McLean and Brody Thompson. Ryan, what kind of think? question is that? Rockford, baby. Student section, who do we think? Rockford. The Rockford Rams! Yeah! Yeah! And Hayden, who do you got? I got. Yeah! I think Hayden's going Rockford, too. Now we'll throw it down to the sidelines for a pregame analysis. This is a highly anticipated game between the Rams of Rockford and the Wildcats of Jenison. The Rams are coming into this game as undefeated, looking to extend their winning season on homecoming night. We have seen players like Mac Vandenhout and Rick Beeson lead this team to victory many times. And I, for one, cannot wait to see what happens tonight under the lights. Now we'll send it up to Liam Peterson and Ryan Krawski in the press box for some first half highlights. Alex McLean with the carry around the right side. He gets to the edge and into the end zone. Touchdown, Rockford. 26 yards on the touchdown run. Burkholder's extra point is good. Jenison will punt. Number seven, Owen Snyder. Sophomore Isaac Poot back to return. Yeah, Isaac, I mean, yeah, like we said about Ryan, I mean, being a sophomore on varsity, that's, like, you got to be a really good athlete at Rockford to do that. He'll take it just past the 25-yard line. He's going up the left side. He's got one man to beat, and what a block by number 13, Austin Harvey. Isaac Poot going up the left side, and touchdown, Rockford. Oh, my gosh, we were just talking about him. What a what a run and what a block from number 13, Austin Harvey. Oh my gosh. Isaac just able to use his speed. He caught that at the 25 yard line for a 75 yard punt return touchdown. Smart by Jenison to have, it, have their kicker kick it into the end zone. So then they'll get the touchback. So there's, it's, it's similar to a punt in a sense, but yeah. So Mac Vandenhout dropping back to pass. Deep ball over the right side to Johnny Rowan Blanton. Wide He's open. got him on the right side. Brody Thompson with the block, and he struts into the end zone. Touchdown, Rockford. Kick is up, and it is good. That'll make the score of Rockford 21. Jenison, zero. Alex McLean goes in motion. Mack drops back. Throws it. Ryan Ahern. To the 15, to the 10, to the 5. He's in for a Rockford Rams touchdown. Number 9, junior Drake Irwin to hold. Kick is up. And kick is good. That will bring us to halftime, where we will send it down to Natalie Allshouse to talk to Coach Brent Cummings. 
The offense has been the story of tonight as the score is 28 to 0. What do they need to continue to do in the second half? Uh, we'd like to see better execution out of the offense. There's a few mistakes there. You don't have to be greedy, but you know, we feel that the offense can, you know, could add a few more scores there and uh, you know, go get a couple things cleared up and hopefully get a chance for our our seconds and thirds to get a chance to play tonight. It would be great. And the defense has also been looking pretty good. What do they need to continue to do? Uh, just keep playing uh, assignment uh, defense. That's what, you know, facing offense like this. As long as they do their job, we'll be just fine. All right. Thank you, Coach. Now back to you, Liam. And we're back at halftime at Carlson Munger Stadium. It's a great atmosphere out here tonight. The score is Rockford 28, Jenison 0. We're with Rockford scoring 28 points on the offensive side of the ball. I mean, you really want to talk about the offense, but the defense puts a shutout tonight. Yeah, the defense has played spectacular. Great plays from Price Seaguard, tackles for loss, pressure in the quarterback. He's had a good game. And another player, Austin Harvey. He's playing locked on from that corner position. But I believe his best play was blocking for Isaac Poo on that punt return touchdown. Absolutely. I think Isaac Poo, I mean, it's hard to be a sophomore on varsity, uh, especially compete at a high level. I mean, not only is he competing, but he's shining. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. He's done a great job. I uh, mean, so if we take a look at his punt return touchdown, he took the ball at the 26-yard line, and he took it around to the left side, and a huge block for number 13, Austin Harvey. And Isaac Poot was able to take it into the end zone for a Rockford touchdown. These guys have done great. Scores 28-0. Uh, they're going to try to continue to keep up the good work in the second half. Jenison is going to try to make a little bit of a comeback. You're never out of it. It's never over until it's over. I mean, so, we saw it in week two. Mona Shores, absolutely. Rockford, yeah. down big, came back and won, took the Great debut. Point. Great point. We'll be back with Under the Lights after the break. Integrity is an important part of sportsmanship. Whether it's how many strokes you got on a hole. If the ball's on the line or not or staying on the cross-country course. We need you to have integrity and show good sportsmanship. We need you. 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 Now we will be sending it back to the booth for those second half highlights. So Jenison able to move the ball into Rockford territory. Says, I think, the, the, I think they got similar yardage on one of their drives, but pretty sure it's the furthest they've gotten so far this game. This is their most promising drive of the game, I agree. It's number 20 going up the left side. He's got a man to beat. Isaac Poot trying to break it up. This is a touchdown for Jenison. Nice job by number 20. Joey Bonacci. Wow. Able to make the 24-yard touchdown. So like we said before, I mean, it's never over till it's over. I mean, Jenison able to move the ball on their first drive that they got so far, and they were able to take it into the end zone. Three minute, 29 second drive from Jenison. They have another quick drive like that, they're in this game. Absolutely, I mean, great job. Hats off to their coaching staff for making those adjustments at halftime. The and kick is good. Hats off to the players for executing. End around to Thompson. Goes towards the right side of the field. One man to beat. He is in for a Rockford touchdown. Great run from number seven, Brody Thompson. Able to get into the end zone on the right side. That'll make the score Rockford 34, Jenison 7. So great response there. They took advantage of that good field position, really capitalized on it. Yeah, 50 yard drive there. They Extended were... their lead. Did a great job. Gavin Corrido, the long snapper, guy who doesn't get a lot of recognition, but a very important part to the special teams. Had a great game last week. Drake Irwin, the holder, and Jackson Burkholder, the kicker. His extra point is good. That'll make it Rockford 35, Jenison 7. We will send it down to the field once again after that impressive play by Brody Thompson. We are down here on the field, second half, fourth quarter. Brody Thompson just had an amazing touchdown, leading the Rams 35-7. to A lot of amazing and exciting things have happened here tonight, but I'm sure there's a lot more to come. Back to you, Liam. So two wide receivers at the top of your screen, one alone at the bottom, guarded by Lewis Bosher. They're going to go at him. And into the end zone for a touchdown, Jenison. Pass completed from Royce to number six, Vandentorn. 
big a, touchdown for Jenison. Absolutely. What a throw. Irwin looking to keep it himself. Takes it up the middle. He's breaking free to the right side. He's got one man to beat. He dives to the pylon and into the end zone. Touchdown, Rockford. Rushing touchdown from number nine, Drake Irwin. Able to break some tackles there, get to the right side, and into the end zone. Great job by the second team offense. Great blocks by the offensive line. Drake Irwin made some mad miss. Really great drive from Rockford there. Absolutely. Just with 46 seconds left in the game. That makes the score Rockford 41. Jenison 14. Stefano Cara into the game to kick the extra point. The kick is up, and it is good. Great kick there from Stefano Cara. So that'll make the score, Rockford 42, Jenison 14. We will now send it down to the field for the post-game analysis. As we come to a close and under the lights, we got a chance to look at both teams, Rockford and Jenison. The score being Rockford 42, Jenison 14. Ryan, what do you think Jenison did on the offensive side of the ball? Um, I think they really struggled coming out the gates in the first half, called scoreless, but they really responded nicely with an opening touchdown drive in the second. We're able to score another one later on in the game, but not enough to win the game. Absolutely. Number 20, Joey Bonacci, and number 6, Leo Vandentorn had the two touchdowns. Bonacci's on the ground, Vandentorn's in the air. Hayden, what do you think Rockford did on the offensive side of the ball to succeed um, in today's game? I think they passed it well, mostly... Uh, passes in the flats to the running backs or to Alex McLean, wide receiver. Absolutely. We saw uh, Mac Vandenhout was having a little bit of trouble in the second half, trying to buy some time. But they were able to figure it out, have some quick screen passes and curl routes to guys like Joey Pitch, Camden Cruzinga. They were able to figure it out in the second half, late in the second half. And they were able to take the win 42-14. to 14. We got the chance to talk to some players, and we'll send it there now. Here I am with quarterback Mac Vandenhout of the Rockford offense. Mac, how do you feel like you played in today's game? Yeah, we struggle a little bit, but it'll be good to get a bounce back week next week. How do you feel like your guys in the wide receiver core helped you? Oh, they're animals. They're, they're good weapons to have out there. Couldn't ask for anyone else. Awesome. Then we got the chance to talk to some of the coaches and other players on the team. So, Tice, you played great tonight. You had a lot of big tackles, able to get to the quarterback in the backfield. How do you think you played? Uh, I don't think this is really an individual sport, but as a team, I think we performed well. And... Our uh, team performing at their best ability allowed me to make big plays. So Absolutely. you got a big game next week in Caledonia. What are you guys going to do to prepare? Same thing we do every week. Just focus on that one team. Don't worry about next week or the week after that. Keep our heads down and keep grinding. Awesome. Sounds like a great teammate. Coach, only allowing Jenison to score 14 points tonight. What do you guys think you did well on the defensive side of the ball? First half was really good. Kids played solid. Kids were, were lights out. Second half, kind of a hiccup, and we won't talk about it too much uh, but but it's going to give us a chance to find ways to grow and get better absolutely you got a big game in caledonia next week what are you guys going to do to prepare well we're going to go to work every day just like we normally do and caledonia is obviously a quality opponent but they have to play us too yeah absolutely okay thank you very much thanks coach team scored 28 points in the first half pretty solid first half how do you think they did uh yeah started off strong a few uh good special teams plays and uh, really got us going um, in a way. Maybe that was a little bit of a curse for the second half. Things came easy and um, couldn't really get into a group. We wanted to get some guys in sooner, but same time, um, at, at the end, it was pretty special to see a few guys, a few seniors yeah, get absolutely. in there and get some action. And so mm -hmm. that was a, uh, I, I think our entire team enjoyed seeing that. Yeah, now, so you move on to Caledonia next week. What are you guys going to do to prepare for them? Caledonia will do the same thing. Uh, any okay red opponent is about showing up and giving your best effort. And, uh, practicing hard, everything that we preach, you know, sets us up for this position, right? We just keep doing what we're doing, and uh, there's going to be a lot of ton of energy around the game, and so we'll just show up and re be ready to go. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank Have a good night. We've had a great time tonight at the Rockford Rams vs. Jenison Wildcats game. I'm Natalie Alshaus. I'm Ryan Karwowski. I'm Hayden Noakes. And I'm Liam Peterson. This has been Under the Lights, signing off.